No cars were blowing at us or honking at us like we was uh, holding up traffic or anything like that. Uh, and, uh, a police officer squad car pulled up, and when he pulled up, these were his exact words. He said, get the F on the side. He turned around, and he put his hands in the earth, and he started to get down, but the officer still approached with his weapon drawn, and he fired several more shots. And if you're curious as to what community policing actually is, what it actually looks like, the best way to imagine it is probably as the opposite of this. So the images from last night and the last couple of nights uh, in Ferguson, Missouri, where the initial crisis was police fatally shooting an unarmed African-American teenager this past weekend. But that crisis has quickly evolved in Ferguson into a rolling conflict between a community trying to protest, trying to express its grief and anguish and protest and anger about that shooting. But that community being met by, in effect, a military response. The town where you should note, though, <laughs> <president>. <laughs> you know, a lot Robert of those Williams military veterans are headlines when he said, sometimes violence must be met with violence. Many asked why. Because some of the people who had thought that it would be better to settle these cases violently, uh, I had been able to uh, persuade them that we should use the courts and go into the courts. So this thing had, uh, had boomerang, and uh, I was being uh, held responsible for having brought these cases to court. There was a trial where a Negro maid had been kicked down a flight of stairs uh, by a white man, and that uh, this man hadn't even bothered to come to his own trial, and that he had, uh, he had also uh, been uh, acquitted. And uh, there was a demonstration as a result of this in uh, the courtroom by the Negro women of the community. And uh, they had approached me and uh, had said, well, you said that you would see that these people would be punished because uh, through the organization we would have competent counsel. And uh, that if it hadn't been for you, that these people would have been punished. And uh, they wanted to know what I would recommend that they do from then on. And so I recommended that, that they meet violence with violence, that uh, Negroes must be prepared to repulse attacks, that they must be willing to fight, that they must be willing to die and to kill if necessary, that uh, there's no law, no 14th Amendment uh, to the United States Constitution of equal protection in the South, and that therefore they didn't have any deterrent, so they would have to be Nightmares are not the sole property of southern sleepers. This is Brooklyn, New York, where headlines tell of repeated incidents of police brutality. Perhaps I'm not the right person to talk about this case, but I feel it so deeply uh, and so closely that I'll not rest until somebody pays for the death of Al Garrett, or he my brother. Not only about Edward Silver, the district attorney of this county, who has thus far failed to arrest the policeman who shot him to death, but I'm angry with a lot of my Negro brethren who don't even get angry about the fact that a poor man lies dead in his grave tonight. Attorney Thomas Russell Jones deplores the slaying. killed as a result of a policeman's bullet fired at him while he was in custody in the 79th precinct on Gates Avenue. This man who has not even committed any crime, he failed to put a bottle or trash in a can. And this trigger-happy cop 
took him in, marched him into the police station. And there's some testimony that Al Garrett was being marched to the police station. He suddenly put up his hands and said, oh, you're not going to do that to me, and marched holding his hands all the way to the precinct. Anybody who's been a Negro for long knows what that means. Any man here in this room knows what you do, why you do a thing like that. Greenville, South Carolina. In this church, whose pastor is J.S. Hall, a group protests the treatment accorded Jackie Robinson at the local airport. Local NAACP president, A.J. Wittenberg, describes the incident. The manager of this airport told them that this was not the waiting room for Negroes, that the one around the back at the side. Mr. Robinson came and told them that he was in the state past, that that surrogation was unlawful. Then he summoned the policeman and told the policeman, if these Negroes sit down, arrest them. Mr. Robinson said to this manager, he said, that if I sit down, will you really arrest me and I'm an interstate passenger? He ready to say yes. He said, you a Negro, aren't you? They are marching on the airport. Capital, petitioning for integrated schools. Thank you. 